Hello everyone. Welcome back to the third edition on the exploration of the abandoned Genesee Valley Canal. On my last episode, we finished way off that way where the trail came to an end and there was some uh, railroad tracks so I said we had to go around a main line. Here is the main rail line that goes through this area. Definitely off limits. So the trail commences right here. And we're going to follow it down to the culvert and check that out. It's a large double culvert. I've called it an aqueduct, but they call it a culvert, so let's go check that out. You can see right down here the canal prism. We're following the old towpath the railroad bed. We are once again heading south and we are on the east side of the canal. Yeah, they call it the Black Creek culvert. Let's take a walk down here and see if we can see this culvert. Right now we're in the canal prism. The culvert is underneath of us. Looks like it's caving in here. Let's go up the other bank. We should see the Black Creek. Yeah, here's all the stonework right here. We're going to find a way to walk down below and take a look at this. Walk along the top here. See if we can find a trail that takes us down near the water. Here we go. And there it is. Wow, look at that. Look at that stonework. Built about, about 1840. almost appears to be sagging right in the middle, slowly sinking over the years. Let's take a walk back over the canal bed and uh, to the other side. Check out the other side of this culvert. Crossing back through the prism.
back to the main trail here. And uh, right over here I saw a trail going down. Let's take a look at the culvert on this side. You know, when there was a body of water like a canal passing over another body of water, I thought that qualified as a aqueduct, but they still call it a culvert. Got some nice stone features right here. Not quite sure what that was. But over here is the other end of the culvert. Aqueduct, whatever. And Black Creek, which eventually flows into the Genesee River. Let's look at these other stone features here. You can see the, the drill marks still in the stone where they drilled down to mine this stone out of the ground. There's another drill mark. This must have been just to shore up the bank here. And to our left, let's get a closer look at this stone feature. Almost looks like a foundation for some kind of building. I don't think it would have been a railroad structure because this stone says it's put here earlier than the railroad. It appears to have a chute down through the center here. And there's a little more right here. Yeah, curious as to what this would have been. Okay, let's get back up on the trail. Again, we're right on top of the culvert here. Black Creek right there. I just noticed on the other side of the Black Creek here, some more stone structure. Looks like a foundation for something. It's right on the edge of the Black Creek near the aqueduct.
Yeah, not quite sure what took place here. Look at those nice square cut stone and again here's drill marks. These stones had to be quarried back in the 1840s. canal trail being right up this way. Most of this exploration is traveling in a southerly direction so now we're facing south and we're going to hike down a ways. There's a road crossing up ahead. Well, let's see if we see any more stone structures or anything and if we do I'll turn on the camera. Here we are at the road crossing, pretty busy road. We're going to follow it on the other side for a while. If I see anything, I'll turn on the camera and we'll check it out. Just came across a nice old hunk of steel here alongside the old railroad bed. It probably held a sign. Of course, there was no trees here then. It may have been a sign signifying a road crossing up ahead, the road that we came across. Anyway, that's a nice old hunk of steel. Really large. On the walking trail here, this is a new wooden post. This is mile four out of Rochester. Looking down at the canal prism, it's really filled with water along here. Without the trees, this would look very much like the original canal with its fill of water. Although this is probably about three feet deep, they say it was normally used at four feet. Here's some remains from the railroad, one of the old signal line towers. And some steel in the ground here. Some concrete down there. And a crown concrete foundation which held some kind of a signal overhead. Back on the trail. Coming up on a interesting little layout here. It was 
looks like a uh, a road crossing maybe a farmer's trail went down through there of course this is the main line if we go this way there appears to be a bridge over the canal prism and a uh, old stone stone foundation I don't know whether to trust these beams they're pretty solid let's see if we can cross this thing yeah well you know this was not here when the canal was used because it's only about six feet wide there's the canal prism in both directions you can see how wide the canal was but this is very narrow so this had to be built after the canal was abandoned made out of the same cut stone this could have been uh, built shortly when the shortly after the canal was abandoned either a small road went through here or maybe a farmer's trail yeah Definitely not wide enough for canal boats. It would have blocked the canal completely, so it had to be built after the discontinuation of the canal. Where I crossed over this little crossing, you can see looks like a trail down through here on the west side of the canal. This is actually the bike trail from 1896 as mentioned in my video part two. So with this we will wrap up this video part three and keep a watch out for my part four coming up. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.